Today we ask the age old question. Will it mac and cheese? Let's talk about that. Good mythical morning. We're back and it's our 16th season, which I think makes us the first 41 year olds to be celebrating Sweet 16. Probably so, and today we're gonna celebrate with some strange mac and cheeses, yeah. but it's not just the 16th season that makes this sweet. Right. We're also approaching our 1600th episode. Ooh. Yeah, a little, <laughs> maybe a little. And uh, we are hopefully gonna break our 16 million subscriber mark. Fingers crossed, fingers crossed, yeah. And that's not all, on top of all that, we got LTAC coming back on Saturday with Stevie, and we're launching new Sunday food shows with Josh to fill out the whole week, so you're never gonna go a single day without that mythical goodness. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be a big fall, y'all. And on top of on top of all that, oh. our 16th novel, okay, it's our first novel, The Lost Causes of Bleak Creek comes out on October 29th, and we have developed a very special live limited city event that we're calling Bleak Creek Conversations. Mm -hmm. So we wanna invite you to go to bleakcreek.com to pre-order the novel and grab event tickets and VIP passes. Grab them. Overall, sincerely, we just wanna thank you so much for enabling us to do what we do and for making us a part of your daily routine. Yes, now let's get to that mac and cheese. Kraft may have perfected the recipe eons ago, but we feel it's time to expand what mac and cheese can be, emotionally, spiritually, and physically. It's time for Well It Mac and Cheese. Mac and cheese is usually pretty simple, a little pasta pipes, gooey cheese, and some breadcrumbs if you're feeling frisky. Oh, we gonna get super frisky, because we're gonna be altering the pasta itself the cheese sauce, and more. Um, so let's get started with a good one. Hailing from our SoCal base, we have developed a secret menu mac and cheese, and we're calling this one In-N-Out Mac and Cheese Animal Style. How Bam. could this not be amazing? So of course we're referencing uh, In-N-Out Burgers Animal Style Fries, when it's usually fries with the secret sauce and the, the grilled onions on top which is my favorite way to eat oh, yeah. the what, fries. And you could get it on a burger as well. Oh, okay. Josh, what have you yeah. done? Tell us the process here. Right, so the pasta tubes are homemade and they're actually made with pulverized, dehydrated In-N-Out fries themselves. So we turn that into a dough. And then uh, there's their In-N-Out spread, that's their Thousand Island, mixed with American cheese in the sauce. And then of course topped with more spread American cheese and caramelized onions, a little bit of crispy French fry breadcrumbs. Dink it. And sink it. You know, In-N-Out prides itself on not adding new menu items over the years. But I, I believe we can make a case for this, Josh. The thing about the let's noodles. Go, just, let's go set up outside of the In-N-Out and protest until they make this yeah. an item. That always works. <laughs> <laughs> the, if I just isolate a noodle, noodle tube? Isolate a noodle tube, won't you, Neil? I mean, it's very pasta-like. Knowing that there's actual fries in this, it's pretty miraculous. This might be the most definitive and simplest answer that we've ever given. In and out, will it mac and cheese? Yes. We wanted to take something from the candy aisle and mac and merge it. And we could think of no better candidate than everybody's favorite perforated candy. We present the break me off a cheese of that Kit Kat Mac. Yeah, look at that. Do you, eat, do you eat it with Kit Kats? Do you, oh, you eat it with spoons. No, you can eat it with a Kit Kat. Josh, I want to get the real thing. What have you done? So the actual pasta has been infused with chocolate and then we made a sauce by actually just blending whole Kit Kats with milk, mascarpone cheese, and cream cheese for a little bit of that salt. And then the wafers actually thicken the sauce themselves, topped with Kit Kat breadcrumbs. Thank you. <laughs> you're, you're very welcome. Do you see the size of a spoonful you've got in there, Neil? <laughs> yeah, bud. Yeah, McLachlan. <laughs> McLachlan. You call me McLachlan now? Mascarpone. Dink it. And sink it. You know. If at some point in the distant future, a wizard comes to me <laughs> and says, what point in your life would you like to return to? <laughs> right now. It would be right now. Save Somewhere between moment. that last one and this one. It gets worse. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, I forgot that happens on this mm. show, doesn't it? <laughs> oh gosh, but this is amazing. I mean, it's 
the consistency is so pleasing because something about the noodles just kind of soaking up and nestling around the chocolate. No, I didn't know the noodles would be able to carry the chocolate flavor mm -hmm. in the way that they are. But I ate a are. noodle by itself, which was amazing. You'd like to do solo noodles. Well, there's so much craftsmanship that went into that part of it. Is that a pun? Is that craft with a K? Craft doesn't make Kit Kats, do they? They make they make mac and cheese. <laughs> oh, that's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> wow, we'll discuss this later. Kit Kat, will it mac and cheese? Yes. yes. You may think of us as weak, soft-bodied urban boys who get our kale kombucha delivered by lime scooter, but we're actually very tough, earthy men's men. Right. And to prove it, we'll be eating mac and cheese made out of a brick. We're calling this brick a brack and cheese. Quite a left turn. Yeah. yeah I mean, uh, you, you would think we could have eased into brick. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I was feeling so good. I was talking about the wizard of the future. Yeah, here's the thing, right? And now, in a world where wizards exist, everything's not all rosy. Well, as long as I can visit the moment I had a second ago and then go back to my other life and not have to live through this. What have you done? Unspeakably bad things. Uh, so I infused the pasta dough with actual ground up brick, and then there's more of that ground up brick to thicken the sauce that's made with um, just a little bit of mozzarella for that Oh, a little bit, thanks for that. Yeah, and then on top are uh, some just more pulverized bricks to act as breadcrumbs. Uh, chew carefully. They're definitely acting as breadcrumbs. Yes. Um, you know, it doesn't smell bad. Well, I mean, people do. It smells good. People eat dirt. Think it. Sink it. Oh, very gritty. Oh gosh, I can hear you crunching. Oh. Don't worry, I've got sealants. <laughs> Don't worry, I had sealants. It's gonna take a while. We're also calling this our dentist's trip to Cabo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Oh my gosh. You know, brick is mostly tasteless. It's all about the texture. And um, I don't know that there's any redeeming qualities like um, if it were charcoal, you could make up some mumbo jumbo about it absorbing toxins. But just, does brick absorb toxin? Yeah, sure, sure. why not? Yeah, yeah. Why not? Yeah, because it, is it either does or it doesn't. Who's to say? I think brick probably does absorb toxins. Oh, well we, then I'm on the fence. It's got a lot of surface area. That's why char that's the only reason that charcoal works is because it has a lot of surface area. Brick dust has a lot of surface area. Yeah, it absorbs toxins. Yeah. I think well, I just chipped my incisor. Brick, will it mac and cheese? Yeah. No. Yeah. No. You know me, I'm always looking to the future when I'll have interactions with that wizard that brings me back to different points in my life. Uh, <laughs> and the future looks pretty apocalyptic these days. And I love that. So we've developed a mac and cheese variation based on the best protein source we're gonna have uh, after that impending societal collapse, cockroaches. We call this cockaroni and roaches. <laughs> <laughs> now, if there's ever any doubt that there's cockroaches in it, they're well, right there's, there. there's two on top of it as well. One for you, one for me. Josh, what did you do? Well, uh, the first thing I took with the apocalypse when it happened was my macaroni extruder. Uh, and then I took uh, cockroach uh, flour and then mixed that in with the dough. And then there's a, a sharp smoked provolone and cockroach sauce topped with some garlic cockroach breadcrumbs. I wasn't listening to anything you said because <laughs> yeah. I was looking at this. Uh, um, it's got a smell to it for sure. I'm usually kind of shaky, but I'm, I can't hold this steady because I'm, I'm so excited to want to eat it. Uh, Should I eat the head or the butt? Oh, are we gonna, I just put that on there as a garnish, which I would, I was gonna flick before we ate. Oh, okay. You know, maybe later. I, because that's not gonna be good. But I want to give this a fight. You want to give it a chance, okay? All and right. if you're curious to watch how they actually made the pasta and made these dishes, you are in the Behind the Mythicality series <laughs> on the Mythical Society. Uh, you can watch how to make this as well as the In and Out one, which you might want to re recreate. MythicalSociety.com. Think it. Think it. I, if you focus on the cheesiness, that helps. But there is an insectedness that kind of comes through. But that's what you're gonna have to embrace in the future. It's grainy. It's like, if, you, if you're expecting normal pasta and then you get that like healthy, really grainy pasta, and you're like, something's off with this pasta. 
And then they're like, oh, it's full of cockroaches. You're like, oh, I, okay. But here's the thing, Link. In the future, there's going to be people who need to be convinced that it's okay to eat insects. Well, do that to me right now. The way you do that is you demonstrate by doing something that seems sensational and outlandish <laughs> and then acting like it's not a problem. And then the children follow. And they're like, oh, now I can eat. Everyone has a slight British accent in the future. Okay, now I can eat insects because meat again. Meat again is my apocalypse name. Because meat again just ate that roach. All right, so let me get this straight. You're about to eat that entire roach. No, I didn't say entire. Like I, I'm gonna I'm gonna bite his head off. And because you're gonna, that's the kind of thing meat again does. But you're gonna act like it's, it's not a problem. It's not a problem. I'm gonna look like it's okay. Yeah. Did you get the pregnant cockroach or the non-pregnant one? I just want you to, I mean, it's not like it's crunchy inside. It's milky and creamy inside. And that ain't cheese. Oh yeah, look at you. Look at your eyes are watering. Is that tears of joy because you've made a good choice? Yeah, I make the best choices. I'm meat again. Smile a little more, be a little happier. Look at me, children. <clears throat> this is what the future looks like. <laughs> <laughs> See how happy I am? <laughs> so, cockroach, will it mac and cheese? No! <laughs> Last but not least, we are regressing back to our childhoods, and I'm talking even earlier than my I eat only cereal or mac and cheese phase. Right. I'm talking all the way back to the original dairy source, breast milk. And we're calling this Mac and double D's. <laughs> okay, Josh, who, who's breast milk? What is have this? you done? Uh, well, I'll say that you do know them, but I don't want to tell you who. <laughs> it was an agreement that we made. I don't know how that makes uh, me feel. <clears throat> oh gosh. Okay. <laughs> okay. So it's basically just mac and cheese, but the milk is breast milk. Yeah, more or less. But we did the store bought noodles, but we boiled them in breast milk, and then we actually made our own breast milk ricotta by just putting some acid and salt in there and letting it curdle and then the sauce is simply made with breast milk and then a little fresh breast milk floater on top to get the most pure flavor. Now, we've gone down the breast milk lane before. Twice. And it's just not great. But here's the thing, you know, in the distant future, meat again, one of meat again's decrees will be that we must still have milk and we have no cows. Where are you, you gonna get you, that milk from? You wanna go with the left one, I'll go from the right one? <sighs> Dink it. Yeah. Sink it. It's like coagulated. Don't say that word. The idea of this one is really unpleasant to me. Not bad. To me. I was a formula baby. <laughs> so this is this is always new to me. It's like I never got used to it. Did you did you take partake of the teat? Every chance I get. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you just take a second spoonful? Tell me later who this is. <laughs> I feel like if I was looking at a picture of this person, I would spit it out right now. It tasted fine to me. It just did. Yeah, it doesn't taste bad. My psyche is a little compromised. I'm surprised at how easily you got through that. Like, it does not taste bad. It tastes a little off. Like, if you serve this to me at a place, I, I would be like, uh, excuse me, something's off about this. Yeah, it's turned. And then they'd be like, oh, it's breast milk. I'd be like, oh, okay, it's perfect then. So I'm going for a yes on this. Are you on the fence? It's not better than regular uh, mac and cheese, but again, in the future, we'll only have breast milk, and I'm not giving up mac and cheese, so. So, so it's true yeah. to say that you are not teetering on the fence? No. Breast milk, will it mac and cheese? Yes! yes. Right at the end, start of season 16, uh, we yesed the last will it? That doesn't happen very often. No. I don't know if it's ever happened. Hmm. Well, thanks for liking, commenting, and subscribing. You know what time it is. I'm Kristen. And I'm Zach. We just got married. And it's time to spin the wheel of mythicality. Yay! It's not what I was thinking about right after I got married, but... <laughs> Click the top link to watch us eat an ice cream and mac and cheese sundae and good mythical more. And to find out where the wheel of mythicality is gonna land. Do a blind taste test in your sleep with our mythical sleep masks, available now at mythical.com.